Now, we're moving on to naming acids. We're going to begin with binary acids. Again, binary means two. So we have two different elements being bonded together. Typically, it's hydrogen and one of the halogens. Again, you should know those are group 17 on the periodic table. No fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Pause the video, get these rules down right here. We'll walk you through the steps though in our following example. So here is an example, HCl. For binary acids, and if you look at each one of these, they're all binary, there's two elements. You are always going to have to put the word hydro first. That's the first step in naming. We are then going to take the root word of the element, chlorine, drop the ending, I-N-E, and add ic, and the word acid to name our acid. So HCl, again, will become hydrochloric acid. If we look at, at HF, H is hydro, fluorine becomes fluoric, and the word acid, so hydrofluoric acid. Our other two examples here, HBr and HI, take a guess, see if you can name those. HBr will become hydrobromic acid, and HI is hydroiodic acid. Now we move on to something a little more complicated in naming oxyacids or oxyacids. Oxyacids are basically when we take one of our polyatomic ions and balance the polyatomic ions charge with an equal number of hydrogens. Looking at some examples here, we have phosphoric acid in which it's typically phosphate, PO4, and it's a negative three charge. Well, it has three hydrogens on the molecule to balance the negative three charge and it becomes phosphoric acid. The same with sulfate becomes sulfuric acid. Nitrate, which is NO3 minus, becomes nitric acid. And carbonate, which is CO3, two minus, it has two hydrogens to balance that charge. It becomes carbonic acid. So the basic rules here are steps and how to name oxyacids, jot these down here. Pause the video and get one through three written down. Well, let's look at some examples here for naming oxyacids. Basically, we're gonna take those steps that you just wrote down and apply those here in these examples. So remember, ic and eight go together. Eight are the polyatomics, nitrate, phosphate, carbonate, chlorate. The eights are the polyatomics. The ic makes it an acid, so you always have to have ic and eight go together. So we'll look at an example here. Nitric acid. Basically, you need to know the formula for nitric is nitrate. You need to know the formula for nitrate. So nitrate in this case is NO2, and it's going to have a charge of minus one on the nitrate ion. Well, to make nitric acid, the negative one charge has to be balanced with a positive one charge of hydrogen. And in doing that, you get HNO2, and that makes it here a neutral compound. And the charges disappear, and we end up with nitric acid, HNO2. Phosphoric acid, same principle here. Phosphate is my base compound, so phosphate, you know phosphate as your polyatomic, PO4, three negative. If it's a three negative, I know that I need H3 to make my acid of a plus three charge to get rid of that negative three charge. And in doing that, getting rid of the negative three, it becomes a balanced neutral compound, and I end up with HP H3PO4 as my formula for phosphoric acid. 
Let's go the opposite way here and let's take H2CO3, the formula, and write the correct name for it. Well, my rules say I need to identify what polyatomic this is. So CO3 you need to know as carbonate. And if you recognize that as carbonate, then I know that for carbonate I can drop my ending of ATE and what goes with 8? Ick. Remember that, Ick and 8 go together. Replace 8 with Ick and it becomes carbonic acid. Exact same setup here, ClO3, that I know is chlorate, and I even know chlorate's charge, it's negative one, because that is one hydrogen right there. To make it chloric, and I have to drop my ATE again, get rid of the ATE, it and eight go together, and it becomes chloric acid. So remember, balance the charge on the polyatomic with number of hydrogens. So those are for all the eights, phosphate, carbonate, chlorate, those examples. What happens when we have the us ones, like nitrous acid? Well, if you have a polyatomic that ends in ITE, nitrite, chlorite, these are go, uh, go together with us. I and us go together. So nitrous acid here, I know I'm ending with an us. That means that typically its, its root is going to be nitrite. And you need to know nitrite is NO2 with still a negative one charge for nitrite. I'm going to balance its charge with an H. So it becomes HNO2. The charge disappears because I balanced it with that number of hydrogens. And I end up here with my compound. Now let's go ahead and take a compound and get its name. So really we're going that way, HClO2. If you don't recognize what that is, you need to. That's going to be chlorite. So we have chlorite here. But again, I don't want it, it, and os go together. So I'm going to drop the ITE. I'm going to add OUS in the word acid to get my compound there. And then if you are looking here for the answer to this one, that becomes sulfurous acid. On to naming hydrates. Here's the rules and the steps that you need to pause the video, write these rules down. What we call an anhydrous salt. Again, determine whether the metal is anhydrous salt excuse me, you're basically looking at is it going to be bonded with an ionic charge or a variable charge. And anhydrous means without water. So with no water, you are going to look, does it have a main group element bonded to it or a transition metal? Basically, these are all of the ones that we've covered already as far as naming ionic compounds. And that's basically we've covered this before, naming ionic compounds. Those are the same rules. What's new here is if it's chemically bonded with a water molecule, so in these examples, they have water. That is what we call a hydrate. Hydrate means with water. Anhydrous, without water. So we'll do without water here, anhydrous, hydrate is with water. You also need to know your Greek prefixes, which we just covered in naming binary molecular compounds. Only thing that's different here is you're going to name your salt the exact same way, calcium sulfate, but you're going to put this little dot here. And basically what that dot means, it, it just basically means with. So with in our example here, dihydrate, two waters. Cobalt chloride, and we need our transition metal cobalt to have its Roman numeral number two to indicate that it's a plus two charge for cobalt chloride. And then how many waters? With six waters, hexahydrate. 
let's go ahead and try some of these examples here for writing these compounds. So we'll dive in here. Let's uh, pick this one here, NiSO4. Well, I know it's nickel, but nickel is a transition metal. So we need to get the charge on my nickel, what charge is that, and then SO4 is sulfate. And now if you are doing this and you don't know nickel, nickel is a transition metal, but you know sulfate's charge here. And we know sulfate is going to be a negative two charge, and I only have one nickel, it must be a plus two charge. So I have nickel two sulfate with, and that's what the dot means, how many hydrates? Seven is going to be hepta and the word hydrate as your answer there. So that's one example of how to write and name hydrates.